Hey Spartans, welcome back. Yesterday we were talking about book making fun and I know that you've had lots of time to develop your book and see how many pages you want it to have. And remember this is an artistic book and so it doesn't necessarily have to have words. We talked a little about that yesterday. A story, by the way, can have various symbols and pictures to create um, the storyline that you want. And I'm going to give you an example of that in a minute. So let's take a little refresher, if you will, on your ways of making a book. And we talked about binding the book. And remember, the bound part is just the um, part that they typically sew together. So you have options depending on what you had at home. Some of you took several pieces of paper and folded them in half and tucked them together. And when you did that, you could um, use a hole puncher or have um, an adult push some holes through the paper. And you can tie those with yarn or string. I've got some twine here um, that you could do that with. Um, certainly, there are ways that you could sew that together, but being that there's many pieces of paper, or if, especially if your paper is thicker, you don't want to have um, that danger of poking that needle into your finger. So certainly there are ways to do that, but maybe this isn't the time for that right now. Um, other ways to bind your book, um, we looked at cutting pieces of paper into long strips and doing that accordion fold. Remember that's back and forth, back and forth like a fan. And if it's taller, like this book is taller, um, if it's taller, you can use that side of the paper to create that length. Or you can even glue things to these accordion um, folds to create a different type of book. So a smaller accordion. And then remember we were putting cardboard on the ends of ours. So I had found several boxes and the only um, thing that you needed to remember was to make sure that your paper, like if you wanted to use this paper this direction, make sure that it actually will glue inside, that it will fit there. Um, I would focus on cutting smaller pieces, at least two the same size for the ends. You can decorate this or the best way is to take another piece of paper trace about a quarter inch to a half inch all the way around. Cut that out extra and cut your corners and wrap it like you would a present. Um, and then of course you can use regular glue or you could use glue stick. Um, I've done both. Uh, I prefer regular glue, but certainly you can use the other. So um, this was an example of that. So you're looking, let me see if I can get a close-up of where you can see this paper, this kind of paper was folded around. And then of course, this accordion fold paper is glued down and you can use these as part of your story. Personally, I love these books just standing up, just standing upright. It can just sit up like that and you can walk all the way around and have a story on both sides. You certainly could use your book um, to create a, sketchbook or um, interesting ideas if you're if you like to journal and that kind of thing but I thought it might be fun to do a story so let's think about the parts of a story you need a beginning a middle and an end and depending on how elaborate or how detailed you want your story um, it could get complicated but this is an example of a book that I did and let's just go through here so you can see how the story progresses without words, thoughts maybe, but so we see there's a turtle, perhaps the story's gonna be about a turtle. Lots of shapes and lines and designs because it's art and you get to make it look fun and good. So we see the turtle looks like he's off on his way. And my story goes with the top, the middle and the bottom. So we're just gonna look at the top. So he's passing by some flowers and leaves. There's some beautiful shapes and designs. It doesn't have to, you can do fill-ins, figure out what you want to do there. Ah, he's obviously somewhere where there's fish and we can see this bottom of the water of the ocean. We see sand and some seaweed and we see a crab 
We see some more designs. Then we see a seahorse and more designs. And then we see the turtle walking again. So we're back to the middle part. We see T is for turtle. And we see a turtle right here. There he goes. Oh, it looks like the wind is blowing and oh, there's a lizard. It looks like he's walking on and it's sandy, but I see a cactus, so it must be the desert. More designs, a snake. And we see the little footprint of the turtle as he continues his journey. Now, there's the turtle in the footprints, just to give the viewer a reminder. And see how I've cut little designs in the edges of this paper. These are just pieces glued down to the accordion. Then we see a dragonfly. Ah, oh, there's a frog sitting on a lily pad in the little pond. There's a little water beetle. And the turtle is going, looks to me, back home in his little pond. Home, sweet home. So this is an example of a story without words or the very few words just really represent like a little sign or something like that. Again, this kind of book is just made with the accordion smaller at the top and pages glued one direction and then the middle are glued the opposite direction. So you can see that on the spine, how they're glued. And when you stand it up, see how this is just beautiful to look at. And again, this is wrapped in paper. All of this is paper with a little bit of cardboard. We talked yesterday about where you could find cardboard, maybe even an empty cereal box. So I want you to take a look at how I would love for you to illustrate. What does that word mean, illustrate? I know you know author. You're going to be the author and illustrator of this book. So that means, yes, you are going to write the book and you are going to draw all the pictures in the book. So here's one that I started. You may have noticed yesterday I've been itching. I have some poison ivy, yuck. And so I wrote a little story because for Mother's Day, I went to see my mom and she was working out in her yard, in her garden. I thought, yay, me, strong. I'm gonna get out, there's Miss Shirley. I'm getting out in the yard and tackling, cutting off big branches and then carrying them over so that we can burn them. She lives out in the country. And um, so there I am. See, no words in this story, but you're gonna get the general idea. And there, I'm seeing, but I didn't see, I was looking at these beautiful, beautiful honeysuckle and they smelled so good and yeah, they taste good too if you've ever tasted one. And I'm looking at the fence and help clearing branches and weeds and things off and I didn't see the danger lurking, but it found me. Look at that evil poison ivy. I'm carrying all the branches, going to take them to the burn. Uh, oh, but thank goodness for no more poison ivy. I can sit on my patio now and drink a lemonade, and there's my medicine to make my poison ivy not so bad. Um, yes, I'll be thrilled when it goes away. But this is my story without words. Now, you're welcome to put words in your story. But it's kind of fun to see what you would do with the images or the illustrating part. When you're doing a story, make sure you do have your beginning, middle, and end. It should make sense. It needs to, to have um, something go with it. You could also do some poetry. I know many of you have been working on reports and things about different animals or habitats. So you could include that in your book. Um, you could do something with your name or someone in your family, like your mom or your dad. And you take those and remember some of you, you may remember at the beginning of the year, we learned about um, the Book of Kells and this is uh, the illuminated manuscript. So you take letters in your name and you just write them out and just kind of decorate using lines and designs and shapes and then maybe even symbols about yourself. And then you're going to color or paint or however you want to do that. You're going to decorate and, and give it a little pizzazz. 
Um, so I'm really interested in seeing some of your illustrations, some of your stories. Please share them with us. Um, you could even share them with your regular classroom teacher. I know that they've been doing some projects as well. So I'm looking forward to um, all of your creations and seeing these stories. And have fun reading, have fun sharing. Um, read them to your little sister, little brother, or cousin, or perhaps help your um, siblings, and you all could create your own books. Lots of fun, and until next time, see you later.